today on Real Life. The Holy Spirit's impact on relationships on One to One. Compromising videos, social media, and the internet on Today's Girls. The prayer ministry of Jason Jablonski Ministries. Today on Real Life. God loves you, Jesus died for you, the Holy Spirit, He empowers you, and the Bible is your guide to abundant life. I'm Don Black, and my special thanks to our co-host today, fill in for Anna, our, our dear friend Flo Demi. <laughs> it's fine. It's you know, they tell me, it, I, I, you know, our, our director said, Demas Shakirian, Demas Shakirian, Demas Shakirian, and I said, I got it, I got it, no problem. <laughs> Flo Dem Demas. I can't say your name. Flow is just easier, don't I'm you think? I'm just going to say flow. That's right. Let's go, Let's go with the flow. With the flow. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I am too. I've watched you on our um, on our sister to sister program. It's such a blessing, just to watch the way the Spirit puts the pieces together. Amen. Amen. We we just have a wonderful group of ladies on that show, so I'm blessed to be a part. Well, you are a big part of it because what I like, every one of the ladies brings something different. And you bring a little bit of a prophetic piece to it, a little Bible. Uh, everybody's a Christian, yes. but you come at it from a little bit of a different angle, which I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate that. that appreciation. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, thought, I thought, you know, when you watch Real Life, you hear me say the opening every time. I wanted to come to that, Flo. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say why I do that every program, because those are the fundamentals yes. of yes. the faith. Yes. We need to understand the fundamentals of what we believe and how we believe. And you know, this program's called Real Life yes. because we take it from the scripture, John 10, 10, the thief comes to kill, to steal and destroy, mm -hmm. but I've come that they may have life. And have it more abundantly. And have it more abundantly. Yeah. And, and then we say, that's what real life is. The zoe is the Greek word of God, the Amen. zoe. And that's what real life is. That's why we titled this program Real Life so we can demonstrate in practical ways the real Zoe, the anointed life of the Spirit. Amen, amen. Yeah, I'm so excited about the program today, Dawn, and, and just that, you know, one of our guests is really going to be addressing that, how to have that Zoe life and how it's going to reflect in ministry. And I, I think that that's so important. I really, I, I enjoy what we do. I really do. I think um, our station, our programming just really has the hand of God on it. It, it, it does. It's, we're blessed with the presence of God. We're blessed with, with His presence, His Holy Spirit's presence. And that's what we're dependent upon. If it wasn't for God, first of all, of course, we wouldn't be here. Yes, yes. Number one, mm -hmm. it wouldn't stay here, mm -hmm. number two, and wouldn't have the ability to mean anything to you at all. Because what we mean to you is we're your family in the Spirit. That's what we are. We're the right. family in the spirit. Right. God has put us together with you. And we're so, we're so thankful for you. We're so thankful that God has given us this relationship. And speaking of the things of the spirit, on Saturday, mm -hmm. we are going to have a special television, two hours of live ministry time on Cornerstone Network from 8 o'clock till 10 o'clock Eastern, where we're going to invite the Holy Spirit's presence to be with us for healing, for deliverance, for breaking bondage. We believe God is a bondage-breaking God. Yeah, He is. He is. And you know what, Dawn? I believe that's going to be just a very powerful, powerful night. And I just want to encourage our viewers, don't miss it. Mm. Don't miss it. Seize this opportunity. God is moving. There's been a wonderful cross-pollination of the different giftings. I, you know, you don't just invite people to invite and fill in spaces. No. You seek God, and then you go after what God has told you to do. Yeah. And the blessing of obedience is on this ministry, and we are in a season of mm -hmm. reaping the harvest, the cross-pollination of what you bought Hallelujah. to the table. And I am so thankful to God for that. And I just, I'm excited about being a part. Amen. Amen, amen. And I'm excited that you're part. Two, God has made a covenant with his people. 
Amen. God has made a covenant. And I want to read a scripture that refers to that covenant in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, the 33rd verse says, but this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel. Hallelujah. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them. I will put on their hearts. Hallelujah. I will write it and I will be their God and they will be my people. Amen. Flo, aren't you glad that we're God's people? I am. And I'm glad to be God's people receiving the engrafted word mm -hmm. on our heart. We want the word of God to be like a firebrand. You know, um, and I believe, again, just encouraging you to come for Saturday uh, because they're going to receive that blessing. Well, you're, you're beloved of God. He loves you. And I don't care about what your circumstances are. Don't care how rich you are, how poor you are, how old you are, how young you are. God loves you. Yes, he does. And his love is extended to you. You can be touched by God today. You don't have to wait till Saturday. He's right here with you today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, I, this program today has got a powerful touch upon it already. So we, we want you to email us if you, if you have something you want to share with us. Love to hear your testimonies. The testimonies yes. are powerful. Family at ctvn.org or call us. Call our prayer partners. They're standing by right now to take your call, whether it's a call of prayer or if it's a call of testimony. Share with us what God's doing in your life, and we want to stand with you. We want to celebrate with you, and we want to war and fight with you, too. Not fight with you, but fight for oh, you. Yeah, amen. <laughs> because we are connected together in, in the Spirit of God. Eva Kroon Pike going to lead us in praise and worship as, as we go first into music with Perfectly Imperfect. Amen. All right, then. <laughs> Never been one to color outside the lines. A world where red never touches blue. That's the only life I knew. I've always been sure about the way things are made to be. Like when you love, you give your life away. You stay the course and you never stray. When the truth is, I'm both sinner and saint. Yeah, the truth is on the any.
Amen, amen, amen. The sweetness of the Spirit of God. Nothing like the praise of God amen. that brings amen. His presence into the, into the place that we are. And I, you know, I've, have you ever wanted to share your faith when you feel that God's moving in your life with a coworker or a friend or a family member, but you just didn't know what words to say or how to, how to, how to do it? If you ever struggled with that, there's help available. Dr. Kurt Bjorklund shares the impact of the Holy Spirit and what he does in us and through us and how we relate to others in this week's One to One. Pastor, relationships are based upon individual participation. But, and that's, that's kind of emotional and it's, it also has physical ramifications, but there's also a spiritual component to that, the, the Holy Spirit's role in our relationships. Uh, how do we discern that and walk in, in that spirit power in relationship? Well, that's a great question. You know, one of the things I've seen, and I've been a pastor for about 25 years. Uh, I started when I was 12. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding about that, but uh, I, I don't like to admit my age. But uh, one of the things I've seen in the years of, of working with people is that rarely do people come to see a pastor, to see me or another pastor and say, you know, I'd really like to uh, figure out how to get closer to God, or I really would love to understand how to defeat greed in my life or materialism. Mm -hmm. What they come and ask over and over again is, how can I have a better relationship? Uh, my marriage is a mess. My kids are estranged. My, my, my parents are irritating me and they want help. And, and what we often do, uh, biblically, spiritually, is we turn to passages like Ephesians 5 mm -hmm. that give great instruction about family and relationships. And, and then we go and we focus on those passages, which is mm -hmm. correct and helpful mm -hmm. and good. But one of the things I've noticed, and this ties to your question about the spirit filled, is right before Ephesians 5 goes into all of this instruction on the family, mm -hmm. The command right before that is to be filled with the Spirit. It says, do not get drunk on wine, it's Ephesians 5.18, mm -hmm. which leads to debauchery. We don't often talk about debauchery anymore, but uh, instead be filled with the Spirit. And then we're given really participles, which in Greek language means this is what it looks like to be filled with the Spirit where it talks about this idea of speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and giving thanks, and then submitting to one another. And so before we get to, to the clear instruction on family, we're told walk in the Spirit, basically, and, and produce inside yourself, through your walk in the Spirit, a joyful, thankful, submissive heart, and then we're given the instruction on, on family. And, and the reason I find that so significant is, is if I rush to how am I going to fix my marriage, if I rush to how am I going to have a better relationship with my kids, if I rush to how do I have better friendships, better work relationships, mm -hmm. instead of starting with, with the Spirit of God at work in me, I will try in my own strength to fix relationships. And if I do it okay and the other people are reciprocal, we might have really good relationships, but it will never have the strength of a spirit empowered, dying to self, surrendering, joy-filled um, kind of approach mm. to, uh, to, to the family and to the relationships that God's given me. Would you agree that all relationships are God-given? Sure. I mean, whether they're positive or whether they're challenging, they're God-given. Mm -hmm. And Charles used to say that. He said all relationships were from God mm. And he had a little rhyme, Charles Stanley, he'd say, they were given from God, some for, and everyone for a reason, hmm. some for a lifetime, hmm. and some for just a season. Hmm. So a little rhyme, mm -hmm. a little Stanleyism that I, I picked up with him. And I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Relationships are all God-given, whether you, it's, it's, it's rubbing you the wrong way mm -hmm. or whether it's not. So in order to achieve in that relationship God's intent, mm -hmm then you cannot be successful if you're not walking in the spirit in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can you be successful in God if you're not walking in that, in a spirit in a relationship? Yeah, no, you'll have a, you'll have a lid to that relationship and, and the lid will be either your own sinfulness, which none of us like to admit or acknowledge or think about, 
or it'll be the person that we're in the relationships with selfishness as well or their inability to give back again if everything works right and this is why people who aren't believers can have good marriages sure, is sure. is they can have a good marriage because they've both learned to give of themselves and follow biblical principles mm -hmm. uh, whether they call them that or not um, you know when you get into uh, wives submit to your husbands husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church often people get bothered by that and the language of submit and that and I always say you know first of all it's to the woman, not to the man, to say make sure, but but the command to the husband is is much harder. Sure is. Uh, to say give up your very life uh, for your wife, and and to the degree that anybody figures out if I give rather than try to get, um, then I'll have a stronger relationship. Um, they'll have a good relationship, but the problem is it's hard to maintain that without a sense of God's spirit at work in us and God's empowerment even more Amen. because Amen. because you can be aware of it but but if the spirit isn't active in you mm -hmm. then what will happen is selfishness will just bubble up and take over because of sin that's inside every one of us and then and then then you're trying to balance this against that and it turns into a real um, out of balance relationship. I think it's interesting that Paul then on in, in, in the sixth chapter in Ephesians, he kind of sums it all up by talking about putting on the full armor of God. Yes. Because that really is the capstone on it. You, you've got to be in the spirit, you've got to treat people in the relationship accordingly, mm -hmm. and then you have to be equipped with the armor of God in order to be successful in, this, in that spiritual warfare. Yes. Because that's what relationships are, are yeah. in many ways. Not with the person, but mm -hmm. in relationship with that person. Well, if, uh, if the enemy wants to destroy the work of God somewhere, most of the time it's destroyed through relationships. Absolutely. Marriages, churches, uh, institutions, families, it's always relational strife first mm -hmm. is the way that, that, that you see things begin to get destroyed. So break it back down for us. Number one thing, relationships are based on the spirit. Well, relationships that, that don't have individuals who are submitted first to the spirit will have a lid that they cannot experience the same kind of longevity and intimacy that relationships that that allow that each person allows the spirit to work in them will experience good word very good word take it we could take it to heart and understand what the where the starting place is and then we can build from there and understand how god wants that relationship to have impact to the world yeah. and even eternity because your marriage has eternal, your children have eternal impact. Yes. Your spiritual children have eternal impact. Mm. And the relationships that we're in, in terms of just friendships and casual relationships, are all eternal too. We got to get our blinders off of this and see it yeah. like this. Well put. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Look forward to you coming back. Thank you. on Real Life. Jason Jablonski shares his heart for ministry and the power of prayer. Pastor John Guest continues his teaching series on the seven minute word. And coming up next, it's a stressful situation when one of today's girls is video recorded at a party and the video shows up on the internet. That's next on Real Life. You know, back when my husband and I first started dating, we used to go on all sorts of crazy dates, but then we realized we really just wanted to be with each other at home. Cornerstone has good, wholesome family entertainment that not only entertains, but it uplifts and enriches. And we are so glad that Cornerstone is always there to be that source of, of inspiration and entertainment with great movies and great programs that inspire the mind. Hello, I'm Joyce Meyer, inviting you to join me each day as we discover how to enjoy everyday life. I'm committed to helping you succeed in all areas of life and overcome problems we all face through the practical teaching of God's Word. Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life. Well, I want to help you experience His joy, love, peace, and wisdom. I'll see you very soon on Enjoying Everyday Life. Look around you. Every day, heroes abound in our country. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. 
will tackle challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, adoption and abstinence, and show that every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. Hello everybody, I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast telling you happy 35 Cornerstone. Praise God, 35 years preaching the gospel of the kingdom. I just love Kenneth Copeland. That was just wonderful for me. Uh, wow. Well, here we go. Chances are you've heard the phrase, that video has gone viral. That's sweet when it's a picture of a cat playing a piano. But what happens when it's a teenage girl, perhaps your daughter or your granddaughter, who was videotaped in a compromising position at a party? It's not so sweet anymore. In fact, the results can be devastating. Let's check out what can happen this week on Today's Girl. Today, I'm taking you to YouTube. In today's world, nothing goes without being videotaped. Cameras and video surveillances are all around us and they are recording our every move. Some can be good and keep us safe and help us, but others can lead down a dangerous road. Last week, we found out that Ambria was at a party, got wasted, videotaped, and then it was posted on YouTube for the world to see. And now that she's found out about it, she'll do anything to get it down before her Uncle Rizzio sees it and grounds her for life. Let's check out YouTube today and meet Alexis. Let's watch how she helps Ambria and saves her social life. Ambria just returned from spending the night at Taylor's house. She flips open and surfs over to YouTube. She watches her video that was uploaded by the name of Anonymous Fun. How could I be so stupid? Now what am I going to do? Oh, you look awful. What happened? Did your uncle suspect anything? No, he didn't suspect anything. He thinks I'm an angel. Will you help me? Do what? Lie again? No. No, Taylor, I'm so sorry. I promise I will never make you do anything like that ever again. But I really need your help in talking to Alexis. You guys are friends, but she doesn't really know me, and I really, really need to find out who posted that video, and I need it down now. Okay, quit whining. I'll do a three-way Skype call and see if she's around, but let me do the talking. All right, I, pr I promise I won't say anything stupid. Hey, girl, do you think my hair is too short? I told the lady not to cut it too short. But do they ever listen? No, they just keep cutting away. <laughs> it looks great. Your hair always looks great. I just, I love your hair. I thought I was just talking to you, Taylor. What is she doing here? I should have texted you. Um, I need to ask, I mean, we need to ask you a favor. What kind of favor? We need you to take down the YouTube video of Ambria before everyone sees it. Hello, everyone has seen it. Nice dance moves, Ambria. <laughs> well, my uncle hasn't seen it, and if he does, I'm gonna be on the first flight back home. She didn't mean to get wasted on purpose. Her drink was spiked. Really? Wow, that stinks. Don't you know, never take a drink from someone you don't know? She didn't know. She's new, new to everything, Alexis. Yeah, and I just, I wanted to have fun and fit in and get along with everyone. Well, maybe you should just come clean and tell your uncle. I can't. He'll be furious. Maybe so, but give him the chance to hear you out. 
he might just understand. Everyone makes mistakes, Ambria, and this one was not your fault. You had no control over it. If I were you, I'd tell him. I agree, Ambria. Uncle Riz will understand. Okay. Say a prayer or two for me, though. Taylor, will you do my eulogy? Oh, seriously? You're so dramatic. Now, go talk to your uncle before you tell another lie. You're right. I'm going to do it now. I got to go. Thanks, Alexis. Thanks, Taylor. Poor girl. Glad it's her and not me. Are you sure my hair looks OK? It looks fabulous. I got to go, too. Um, I'll keep you posted. So how did it go? He was mad. My aunt actually cried. They were beyond mad that I lied. I'm grounded and no more parties. So my social life <laughs> is completely over. How long are you grounded? Four years. <laughs> I didn't protest. I'm sure he'll lighten up as the years go by, though. Did they see the video? Yeah, I showed it to them. My uncle actually wanted to go to the school and demand who posted the video. That could cause a lot of trouble. Trouble for Jessica and whoever else posted it. Yeah, I know. I would for sure not have a social life ever again if that happened. I'm really hoping he'll cool off. Why do you have long sleeves on today? It's like a gazillion degrees out. I'm cold natured. I always wear long sleeves. I gotta go. Glad to know you're still around. <laughs> Me too. Hey, thanks for all your help. No problem. Did you know that only about 7 to 8 percent of teens have YouTube accounts? That doesn't sound so bad. But here's the real scoop. You don't have to have a YouTube account to read and view the videos that are being uploaded. Ask any teenager if they've surfed YouTube videos and 99.9% .9 will say yes. And several online surveys state that 93% of teens visit YouTube at least once a week. And according to YouTube's online facts, 2 billion videos are watched every day. 2 billion. That doesn't seem possible. But safety-wise, YouTube isn't really the place for teens to connect or meet up with friends or strangers. And YouTube does state they prohibit pornography, drug abuse, underage drinking. You know, that's all great. However, what's alarming is what teens are viewing and reading. Foul language, racial slurs, questionable behavior, and comments run reckless. Just like Ambria's video we just watched. So what do we do as parents and grandparents? First of all, we need to know what our teens are doing. Search the internet and find out what's trending. Find out what videos teens are watching and why. Learn about the YouTube challenges and talk to your daughter about the dangers. What are challenges? They're dares and they're being videotaped. For example, there's the cinnamon challenge in which people try to eat a eat ground cinnamon in a short amount of time without water. It's impossible to do. This challenge can leave a person gasping for air and water and it can cause sudden health issues like a collapsed lung. Then there's the salt and ice challenge in which people put salt on their skin, put an ice cube on it for as long as they can withstand the pain. This causes severe burns. Neither of these challenges can be considered smart or intelligent things to do. Yet there are thousands of YouTube videos showing people, young and old, participating in them. Be aware of what your teen daughter is viewing and uploading. Once it's out there, it's out there. And videos are very difficult to remove because of the rapid rate they're being shared and embedded on other social networks. 
This is real life with today's girls. And even in these out of control times, stay encouraged. The Lord is still in control. He tells us in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you'll have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Now, don't miss next week's episode when Alexis deals with her real life issue that she has covered up for years. Flo, in, in, we're in a studio filled with cameras. Yes. Television cameras. Mm -hmm. And it used to be to be videotaped, you had to go someplace. Yes. And go where a camera was, a very expensive. But you know today, everybody has a video camera. Well, most everybody has a video yeah. camera in their phone. And with a phone like that, it changes the entire dynamic of what we can do in public and, and not have it videotaped that would last forever. I, that is so true, Dawn, and I, you know, it's something that we have to be cautious about. I love uh, the show Today's Girls, and I love how they always end with facts that are very helpful mm -hmm. to us. I so appreciate her sharing about the challenges because so many young people, college students, teenage students, mm -hmm. have done things like that, that cinnamon challenge, and they don't realize the damage behind it. Um, and I, I am just really encouraged when I watch these, this kind of programming because it's, I know that it'll be effective and helpful. Well, it is, it is helpful. And the reason we, we do this program is so that we can give you some information. If you're a mom or a grandmother mm -hmm. or you know a teenage girl that's mm -hmm. going through these issues or maybe you don't even know what they're doing all, at all, we need to be aware. There's a, a fact sheet or a ministry mm -hmm. sheet mm -hmm. that Terry's prepared we want you to call and get it, call the number on the screen and ask for it. This one's on YouTube and say, I want to know more about technology and how my teen may be involved in technology. Don't ignore it. Don't yeah. just say, oh, it's casual. There's nothing to it. It's all going to be okay. These are, these are things that could actually impact their life for the yes. rest of their yes. lives. Yes. So get involved, be involved, get this fact sheet, study a little bit and understand what's going on. And, you know, we're going to come back in just a minute and stay tuned because we're going to talk about miracles, signs, and wonders and what God's doing in churches all around the country. We'll be right back. Mom, don't forget to pick me up at school right at 3.30, okay? I have to go to Ames to study before soccer practice. Thanks, Mom. You know, being best mom is a full-time job in addition to the one I already have. It's in these rare moments of me time that I'm so thankful that Cornerstone is here. Cornerstone ministers to me with a programming that feeds both my heart and soul, that teaches me how to be the best me I can be. There are very few moments when I can invest in myself, but it's nice to know that when I can, I can watch a network that cares for me. Pennsylvania is coming to be on the show. Ah, uh, that's right. Miss Pennsylvania Wednesday on Sister to Sister, plus lots more. Hot what else topics. Do you have? We got mm -hmm. hot topics. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about Barbie as a role model. Oh, yeah. What scriptures are hard to obey. Uh -huh. And being rude. No. Yeah. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. No, no, no. Sister to Sister on Wednesdays. Don't miss it. Joining us now is Jason. 
Jablonski. He is a ministry leader based out of Washington, Pennsylvania. Jason, that's where I was born. He is here to share with us what God has been doing with signs and wonders through speaking and prayer ministry. Jason, welcome Thank to you. Real Life. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for having me. Now, are you born and raised in Pennsylvania? Yes. So that's home. That, that's where you grew up? Yep. Washington, PA is where we grew up. Well, yep. tell, me, tell us about the ministry that God's put you into. us. Just give us a little introduction on how you got started, how you heard the voice of God, the call of God. Well, I tell you what, I got called into the ministry around the age of 20. And uh, from that point on, God just led us into different churches, the pastor. But within the last two years, he called me out on the road to uh, take this message of healing and revival. So that's what we've been doing for the last two years. How did, how did you hear that call to go out onto the road? I, I got a burden in my heart. I always knew that I was going to go out into the full-time evangelism. I was just waiting upon it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when God told us to launch out on this, he told me that, that when, the, when he would send me out, if the church was to get renewed and refreshed in God's presence and they get their senses awakened that there's a dying lost world going to hell, that they feel so convicted and compelled to do something about it that they make an impact on their community with the gospel. When that happens, it's just not going to last for a couple of days or a few weeks. It will last for several years. And I believe that's really what revival is. I think there's a stigmatism that comes with revival. But I really feel that in this day and age, brother, if you look around us, we need a revival to hit our churches in America once again. And I think if the church gets revived and they get refreshed in the, in the presence of God, I feel that this country will see another great awakening happen. And I, I, I can't wait for that to happen. So you used to pastor, yes, and then you felt the Lord calling you out from that to go and evangelize. Yes. So how do you feel that you pastoring, the transition from that to evangelism, what do you feel that you gained from pastoring that's helping you in evangelizing? Well, working with people, that, that you know, it, it gets you prepared for that because, you know, you meet all sorts of people out on the road that, that are struggling with different things, you know. But um, I know that the, when, I, when I launched out from pastoring into this, I had a burden down in my spirit for um, the church to, to see revival, to have the presence of God show back up in our church services again. Uh, the, go ahead. Do you think that the pastoring also gave you some insight to the intimacy or lack of intimacy, what's going on in the church and why we need the revival? I, I do, I do, because I think there's a lot of pastors mm -hmm. that want to see revival hit their churches, that they want to see the presence of God be seen in their church services again. I think we've got too, too uh, comfortable with wanting to have 15-minute um, worship, 15-minute um, music, and you know, 15 minutes of preaching, and then have us out by 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you that if we're going to see the presence of God show up in our church services, we've got to get rid of this mindset that we have to be out by 12. <laughs> well, Jason, what's it take? What does it take? to see that presence, to feel that manifestation of the Spirit? Well, I tell you what, lately what has been happening in, our, in most of our services is that I give a response for the, for the people to respond to the altar. Mm -hmm. And when they come forward, there's just this time of when they come to the altar that we, we see people starting to want to get into the presence of God, and they don't want to leave. I've seen altar calls last to 1 or 2 o'clock in, in the afternoon just because they're hungry and thirsty for more of the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we just put all these programs and all this mindset of what we think church really is and really get back to the basics, I tell you, corporate prayer, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. just, there's just so many things that, that, that takes place when revival will happen if we would just get back to the basics of doing those things. Mm -hmm. Jason, can I ask you this because you used the term altar call, mm -hmm. and for some of our viewers that could mean something different depending on what denomination they came up in. Mm -hmm. For some people, an altar call can be like opening the doors of the church. An altar call could be a call to salvation. So I'm sure some people are going, what in the world could you be doing at an altar call that takes several hours? Right. Well, I tell you what, you know, and I always break it up like this. Um, anytime that, that there was a, a sacrifice on the altars in the Old Testament, fire always came. Beautiful. And I love this because I think that when people come and they set their they come down to the altar and they're willing to give themselves over. You know, Romans 12 talks about us becoming a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And then we will know the good, the perfect, and the pleasing will of God. Mm -hmm. I think if we lay ourselves down at the altar and say, God, here I am, that fire of God will come and set us on fire, I believe. And, and I think that that's what people are hungry for. They're, hu they're hungry for the fire of God to, s to set them free from the bondages that they're under. And, and just to have this renewed presence of God in their lives again. 
So you're not just leading people, though this is very important, you're not leading pe just, just leading people through the prayer of salvation. You're helping them to have an encounter with God. Exactly. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a terminology that comes out of the 80s and 90s, 70s, 80s and 90s, but you don't hear a lot of it. I don't hear a lot of that talk now. Well, that's, that's what you're describing. Yes. Is that type of an experience? We've, over the last several months, we've seen people come to the altars to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've seen seven or eight of them receive it instantaneously at the same time. That's some act stuff right there, brother, you know, where everybody's receiving it at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's something that's not focused too much on, on, on in the church anymore. And I think it's because we we're afraid that if somebody speaks in tongues in our congregation, if somebody new comes in, they're going to be frightened off and they're going to leave the church. Um, what I like to say about that is, is that if it didn't scare people away 100 years ago when, Pe when the Pentecostal movement started, uh, it's not going to scare anybody away now. It made people actually come to the churches well, yeah. to see what was going on. <laughs> well, that's, isn't that the deal? Is it makes Christianity irrelevant right. to Amen. real life, to everyday life. Amen. Somebody's watching the program right now, and we'll give you a camera and I want you to look into that camera. I want you to talk to them about the baptism of the Holy yes. Spirit and what that's important. And then we want them to call. We, we, we've got information we want to share with them. But take, take this camera here and just okay. tell, tell, tell that person how to receive the baptism. Well, I want to tell you that, that God wants to fill you with this spirit. The Bible says in Acts 1.8 that we would receive power from on high and we would be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and throughout the ends of the earth. If you want to get your loved ones saved, if you want to get your coworkers saved, your neighbors saved, mm -hmm. your, your family, your loved ones, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, the Bible says that over in Martha, we would receive the baptism and fire. You'll have this new sense of God's Spirit, this, this power inside you. The Bible says in Acts 2, 4, that when the Spirit came upon them, they spoke with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You'll receive this new prayer language when you get filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And just when a child first starts talking, it doesn't make any sense. It's all gibberish. It's all goo goo dad dad. That's what a child starts talking when he starts. But as he starts praying, as a child starts talking, it will be the same way with you when you start praying this prayer language. It will just sound all gibberish. We goo goo dad dad. It will, might sound like da 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 da. That's just your flesh and your spirit. Your, your spirit in conflict with one another. But if you submit yourself over to the Spirit of God, just allow Him to get that prayer language out. Even if it sounds gibberish, don't worry about it. A child sounds gibberish when he first starts talking. But God wants to give you that. I believe that right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the baptism of the Spirit, that said Jesus was promised, He will baptize you with the Spirit and with fire. Yes. And that's the fire that is a cleansing fire, cleansing for us personally and cleansing for our culture how God's going to cleanse this culture. We have information that we have prepared for you. We want you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Walk in the power of God. Call 888-665-4483. We're going to pray for you. We, we love you, and we want you to have all that God has for you. Flo, what's coming up next? Well, it's time for today's Bible study. Our teacher this week is Reverend Dr. John Guess. He's the senior pastor of Christ Church at Grove Farm in Sewickley, Pennsylvania. His series is called intimacy with God. And he continues now on today's seven minute word. Well, here we are talking about intimacy with God. And we're really talking about prayer, what it's like to pray. And we're taking the Lord's prayer since Jesus used that as a model prayer, giving us principles of prayer by which to pray to call God Father, our Father, an intimate relationship. Then in heaven, hallowed be thy name, a God who is not just intimate with us, but transcendent, transcendent, a great God, a big time God, a holy God. And then it goes on to say this, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God has a kingdom. You remember Jesus on earth? in front of Pilate, the governor of uh, the state of Israel at that time. And the accusation was that Jesus was claiming to be a king. The governor said to him, are you a king? Jesus said, I am, but my kingdom is not of this world. And Jesus' kingdom is not territorial. When he comes into our lives and into our hearts and we ask him to come in, he becomes for us our Lord, 
our leader, our ruler, our king. He becomes king in our hearts. We enthrone him. You know, maybe, the little tract about God has a wonderful plan for your life. To invite him to come and sit on the throne of your life is a huge step of surrender to him. So the big deal here in this prayer is that his kingdom might come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wherever Jesus is and acknowledged as Lord in our lives, it's as if his kingdom has come and his will is being done. Now often you don't even know what to pray for some people. And one of the things that's so important is, as, I, as I've thought this through, to be able to pray for people without knowing what the remedy is, but knowing that God has the remedy. Life is so screwed up and complicated for so many people, it's almost as if they have no idea, and neither do we, as to how to put things right. But to be able to pray over them, so to speak, in your mind as you pray for them, the Lord's Prayer, our Father, care for them as a father, hallowed be thy name. Change what's going on in their life so that you are honored. Your kingdom come, your will be done in their lives as it is in heaven. It's a wonderful way to pray. Give them their daily bread each day. Watch out for them, look after them. You pray the whole of the Lord's Prayer. Forgive them their trespasses as they forgive others. Bring them to a place of repentance. The prayer is such a wide prayer in terms of certain needs, whether it's the need for forgiveness or need for daily sustenance, encouragement, work. Pray the Lord's Prayer. In all, what you want is the Lord's will in their lives, to be praying that his kingdom come, his kingdom come, not yours, not theirs. His, that his kingdom come, his will be done right here on earth as his will is done in heaven. Guess what? The will of Jesus, the will of our King, Jesus, is perfectly done in heaven. Nobody argues, nobody tries to change his plans. Heaven is on his agenda. What we need to be in our lives is on his agenda great struggle in my life as a pastor is to be on his agenda. So often we come to him and want to get him on our agenda, like our will be done. You bless my will. You bless the direction of my life. It's the wrong place to be. These opening descriptions of how we relate to the Father in this intimate relationship is about saying to him, your will be done. Get me on your agenda. You take a hold of my life and use my life the way you want to use it. There is nothing more rewarding than having God not bless your plans, but give you his plans, and you get into his plans, see where he's working, get in, his, get in stride with him in the stream of whatever God's doing around you, and then see him go to work through you. It's so rewarding. There is nothing quite like having God do his work through you. Much more of consequence than you being successful in something is to have that, that well-being, that rewarding sense of, wow, that's God using me, God working through me. And that's how supernatural stuff gets done. When it's us who's doing it, we can only do what we can do. But when you've got a supernatural God at work in you, a God who's above nature, in charge of nature, supernatural, at work in you and you yield to him and ask him to work in you. It's a brilliant thing to have that expression. We were made for God. He made us in his image. Jesus comes to dwell in us. His spirit resides in us. And he wants us to express his love, his power, his way. Lord, Thank you for the opportunity to love you, to serve you, to know your experience in our lives. Please, Lord, take control. Forgive me for trying to run everything and control everything. Have your own way, Lord, in my life. Amen.
on Real Life. Miss Pennsylvania USA talks about wearing the crown and shares her own personal story of winning in life. Rania Sayek shares how prayer is yielding much fruit in her ministry in the Middle East. And it's time again to dig deep into the scriptures to answer your hard questions. That's tomorrow on Real Life. We're back here to pray. We believe God is a supernatural God that works in our behalf. Amen. Through prayer and agreement, whenever two or more agrees, and we're here to agree in the name right. of Jesus. Cindy called in for a job. She loses her job in June. She needs to have a new job. And um, Joe called and she needs a prayer for her husband, for her husband and for God's will in her life. Uh, who do you have, Flo? If I can, Don. Sure. Cindy, the Lord is speaking to me, and you're looking at this as your job getting ready to close, but God is opening up a new door for you. Amen. Be sensitive to that. Amen. Amen. Right. Uh, John, his uh, right uh, hip and side, and we just decree that God makes every crooked path straight. Uh, Mildred, um, she's raising her granddaughter, and so... Uh, we're in agreement that she will be as, she'll have those spiritual archery lessons that are necessary. Amen. I have uh, Meline, she can't move her right foot or walk on it. Um, we also have Tanisha. Uh, she is having uh, problems with her immune system. So keep that, we'll pray for that. And then um, Cindy, who is gonna be losing her job in, in June, we'll be praying for God to, uh, uh, find her a new okay. one there. And then um, Emma, who is, uh, her daughter is in labor and is having trouble with uh, the water breaking. We'll pray for for safety on that for the child and the mother. Yes, God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Well, Charles is called in and he is believing God for a godly wife. All right. He wants to find the right the right wife and we'll stand Sending with you things. Charles in Amen. Jesus name that you will find the woman that God has mm -hmm. designed for you in Jesus name Amen. hallelujah uh, Mildred's called in and she has strep throat and has issues with her throat we need to pray prayer for her and a prayer for her granddaughters and for uh, Rachel let's put our prayers together guys mm -hmm. let's just extend our faith for all of these people we didn't have time to read everybody we do let you know we do pray specifically for everybody we have them on an altar we have an altar in our prayer room that we uh, continually pray for you but let's let's pray for these folks lord we come to you in the name yes, of jesus lord, lord jesus. And we thank you god for your supernatural yes. touch yes. lord moving each life mm -hmm. in the way they need yes, to I feel your presence you, god. god we pray yes. for the baptism of the holy yes. spirit yes. lord we pray for the giftings yes. lord we pray god that you'll open their eyes and give them a new revelation of who you yes, are yes. and who you've made them to be, God. Help them to have a new hope of their calling, yes. Father. Empower them, Holy Spirit. Give them strength to move forward, God. Yes. Not to be in the same place as they were, but the change in their lives will be powered by you, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Step forward. Amen. Reach out for God. He's always reaching down and out to us. Thank you for being on the program, Thank brother. Thank you for having so me. So thankful. Thank you, Flo, for co-hosting. Thank you for having what me. What a blessing you are to <laughs> us. Let's end today's program with Matthew Cutter as he sings, Falling in Love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this room, in your home, falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. The best thing I've ever done. He's so great. Falling in love. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. It's the best thing I ever done. Let's sing it together.
together. Real easy, sing. Come on. Falling in love with Jesus. I'm falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. It's the best thing. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather. Come on, right here where you are today, wherever you are, I want you to know that the love of God has no boundaries. No boundaries can separate you from the love of Jesus. Today, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just pray over you that in the midst of your circumstance, in the midst of your situation, sickness or pain, that the Holy Spirit of the Lord just come to where you are right now and the love of an unconditional Father come over you right now and just minister right where you are. Come on, let's sing again. Falling in love, falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. In his arms, never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather. 